So what car did I buy then? I'm going to put you out of your misery straight away. This is a 2 litre TFSI Audi TT 2007, late 2007. So I've travelled a long way to pick this one up and as you can see it's a bit of a doer upper. You've got leather Alcantara in there but it's absolutely filthy but I think I can have a decent stab at that. Um, it's a little bit Heath Robinson with some of the electrics. It's had a Bluetooth kit in here and it's got some aftermarket reversing sensors which are not great to be fair and you can see someone's piggybacked on the fuses and stuff it looks like they've done a proper job so a couple of things like the 12 volt charging socket doesn't work stereo powers on absolutely fine but produces no sound so that's a problem either with the amp or possibly just with a fuse so i'll be looking into that over the next few days i think the aftermarket parking sensors will have to go or i'll at least unplug them and I will be fitting a new head unit to this car in due course. I've got one coming from China, which is going to take a little bit of time, but I will be fitting a new head unit to the car. It just needs a damn good interior clean, interior detail really. I mean, as you can see, it's pretty filthy. So there is a bit of an issue with the glove box. Let's see if you can work out what that issue is. Oh, it's that. Uh, this is a massively common problem on Audi TTs. The brackets break, someone's had a go at fixing it but haven't done a very good job. I'm going to have another go at that and if my attempts to fix it fail, I'll literally pick another one up second hand from somewhere. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. It's also got another massively common Audi TT problem, which is that these rear parcel shelf hinges break. And as you can see, they were just held on with like plastic rivets and it's a bad piece of design so what I'm going to do is to essentially bond them back to the plastic and then just drill some self-tapping screws into the trim and evidently they hold much better than they ever did on original spec. So you might be thinking to yourself why have you bought this Jim haven't we seen this before you bought that Focus to do up and sell and got rid of it because it was too much work and this one looks like a load of work well it is it is going to be a lot of work this car but it's superficial stuff I would not have bought it had it not driven so well. It was nowhere near the condition it was, it was said to be in in the advert and I had quite a lot of correspondence with the guy selling it and have to be fair, he said it was in much better condition than it is, although he did say, you know, it wasn't perfect, blah, blah, blah. But the price was just so good that I assumed it must have a couple of issues. Now, test drive was absolutely brilliant and I've just driven it back from Manchester and amazingly got 39.4 mpg from it and it drives brilliantly. It really, really does drive well without fault. The state of the interior doesn't worry me too much because I can tackle most of that. I won't be able to get it up to sort of showroom standards again, but I'll certainly be able to get it up to a decent standard. The bodywork is the only thing I'm worried about a little bit. Um, it doesn't actually need bodywork bodywork. It's got one tiny little bit to fill in a bumper but it needs a bit of paint and I'm not great with that. But the really good thing this car's got going for it, unlike so many others I saw advertised, is that it looks genuine for a start. So the mileage makes sense. It's done a reasonable amount of miles every year. It's got a stamp service book. It's got four almost new tires on it, which is great. They're not, they're all budgets, but uh, they've all been done very recently, you can see, but the massive annoyance is there's no locking wheel nuts. So I'll have to see if I can sort that out. But the thing for me is it just drives so well and, you know, others I've test driven haven't and the service history hasn't made sense and there's just been question marks, question marks. With this one, I feel like there aren't any question marks. You can see everything that's wrong with it. And, uh, you know, if I think it's too much, I'll just sell it on and get my money back out of it. But the plan at the moment is to do it up bit by bit and uh, yeah, hopefully end up with a really nice car that I'll go do a trip in and then I'll sell it on when I'm finished with it. I'm now just going to give the car its first wash, good once over, and uh, I'll just walk around the car when I'm finished. Okay, so we're starting off with this, and it is filthy. Uh, it came back from Manchester the other day, and it's just covered in filth. It had been through um, sort of a hand car wash just before I picked it up, but I mean, they haven't done the most thorough of jobs. It probably won't surprise you to find out. Now, in the paintwork, 
can see there are quite a few surface scratches and this is quite pitted and horrible but a lot of that might be grime um, and around here you know the paintwork's pretty awful so <clears throat> I think I'm going to have a go at polishing that out and that will involve sanding the car back and then going at it with some polish and the way I sort of look at it is if it doesn't work fine we'll move on to plan B if it makes it worse you can see some more here is pretty bad if it makes it worse well the only other option was some paint anyway so you know we just go to that we go to that plan but if I can improve it which I hope I can quite a lot then that's plan A by the way I don't have an amazing amount of time today to do a fantastic job and of course I am going to be wet sanding the car in the very near future so I'm not going to go too crazy today but I'll be using these three products so I'm going to start off with the Sam's detailing snow foam I'm then going to use Sam's detailing iron reactor I'm going to leave that for a bit then I'm going to use the Sam's detailing shampoo with a mock wash mitt this comes from their sample kit I'm going to pop a code on the screen for Sam's detailing it is a discount code and this applies to any orders of non-sale items over 30 quid but use this code and it helps support the channel there's also a link in the video description I should also mention just before I start I'm going to go over the car with some of this stuff it's really really cheap um, it's just a degreaser sort of all-purpose cleaner and then in places that are particularly grimy like up here in these shut lines and things and around the badges I'm going to agitate it with a brush and then I'll just jet it off right while I'm doing this car wash I'm just going to put the camera onto a time lapse Okay, so the car's now had a very rough once over, and I mean very rough, and it gives you a chance to see just how ropey the paintwork is in some of the areas. This being one of those areas, I don't know if you can, how well you can see that, but it's quite heavily scratched, a really heavy one there, and then some lighter scratches up there. <clears throat> and on the, the, on the bumper here we've got quite heavy scratch there there another one over here and then a bit here and a bit here they're not actually too bad then we've got more scratch in here this definitely needs some kind of refurb I might just try that with some metal polish before I do anything else I may even spray this I might spray it black or silver it depends if I do a color change on the wheels or not a little bit of damage there then this looks like, I don't know, a blind man's been trying to get into the door with a key and uh, it's just really badly scratched there. So that's gonna be a tough panel to do, really. Um, I will try wet sanding that and polishing it, but that line's just in the wrong place as well. So that might end up needing a bit of paint, I don't know. But if I, certainly if I can make some of these things just look better, that'll be good enough for me a uh, little chip there um what else have we got there's a little bit of damage there but i'm not too worried about that i'll just touch that in about a million stone chips but again i'll touch those in just with a touch up pen the worst of them a lot of them i'll probably just leave a uh, bit of damage here on this corner you can see there's a that needs filling and painting uh, there's a little scuff on the wing mirror and that's about the oh and then on this rear arch we've got a scuff here oh and another massive scratch there that i've just seen for the first time it's what i would call a good six foot car like from six feet away it looks very very tidy indeed but when you get up closer you start to notice the the scratches the wheels are actually all pretty good uh certainly there's a little bit of curbing on on one or two of them but there's nothing sort of catastrophic and I may even do a colour change on them at some point. And if so, obviously those bits of damage will get sorted. 
but as it is I wouldn't bother refurbing them because they're not that bad so it probably won't surprise you to know I did a v-check on the car and uh, let's have a look at that together here only two previous keepers which is good a problem car has usually been moved on plenty of time so that's a fairly good sign it's obviously completely clear in terms of salvage history ex-taxi insurance write-off all that kind of stuff not been scrapped imported exported nothing like that at all the VIN number matches everything I checked everything on the chassis it's all good um, all the details for the car there that you would normally expect all fine all fine so the first owner had it four years second one had it six years and, and then the owner I bought it from had had it four years so it's now had three previous owners and then if we look at the mileage so first MOT it done 23,000 then you can see it goes up sensibly every year that's exactly what you want to see on a mileage record that there aren't any bits where it suddenly goes flat or even goes down even worse but it's consistent it's done similar miles every year and then there are a couple of little silly things that came up on the mot so it's mot'd a couple of weeks ago so it's got 12 months mot the only advisory still left on it uh, it needs a cv boot which i'll get done and windscreen damage but not adversely affecting driver's view it's actually a little chip on the windscreen which has been repaired but lots of times when you have a windscreen repair done you can tell it's been repaired and there's no no action to take with it as far as i'm concerned it'll just stay there isn't it it's absolutely fine so main dealer price they're saying trade poor condition 4570 quid part exchange price 3830 well i've done okay with that one at around about four grand which is what i paid i cannot tell you how many cars i've looked at in the last few weeks where this mileage is suddenly flatlined for like three years. I've seen cars where for the last four years, they've allegedly done less than 50 miles a year. And I'm sorry, but I just don't believe it. I really don't. Uh, the car has got service history as well. It's not Audi service history. I've used just private mechanics and things over the years. A um, couple of Audi specialists, I think, with the first owner. But it has been serviced fairly regularly. So that's, again, good. It hasn't been serviced to the top standard, I guess. But it's been serviced. So that's good to see. So that's it, folks. The cat's out of the bag. Let me know what you think in the comments i've already solved a couple of the issues the interior i'm going to do a separate video on which will probably be the next one i release on the audi and i've just had a go at the front seats the front door mats and the steering wheel and the difference in them is incredible so i'll take you through the process that i do with that only quick videos a lot of the videos in this series are probably going to be two or three minutes just me doing little bits and bobs um, I've also diagnosed the problem with the stereo. I've gone through the fuses. Everything seems to be fine. At the end of the day, it was the amp, I think. So I've ordered a new amp. I've taken the old one out. Wait for that to arrive and we'll give that a test. Also, the 12 volt charging socket, cigarette lighter, whatever in the front didn't work. That was that was just a fuse. So that's dealt with now. I've also ordered a locking wheel nut from eBay. It was only 17 quid, which I think is really good for a proper Audi locking wheel nut that will fit that wheel. So lots of work still to do on the car, but I've got plenty of time to do it. It drives fantastically well. It's great fun. Got a quote today to uh, tint the back windows, just the, the large hatch window and the two little side windows. Um, There's only 100 quid, I think. So I'll probably go ahead with that depending on how much money i end up spending on the paint or possibly even a wrap um, i am thinking about doing a wheel color change and i've changed the badges over and that fuel flap to black let me know if you think that's a good idea in the comments i'd love to see what you guys have got to say about that and thanks for all the good comments in the first video it seems a lot of people are quite interested to see this series and what i do with the car and how i do it and all the rest of it at the end of it i will try and sell the car and i'll just try and sell it for exactly the money i've got into it so i don't intend to make a, a big profit on the car or anything like that i'm literally using it to make some interesting com content and to spend some time with a car that i've always had a desire to own you know not 60 and that thing's got 6.4 seconds it's doing 39 mpg on a long run uh, it might actually be hard to part with at the end of it but I don't have a ton of drive space so we shall have to wait and see but the the plan is definitely to sell it 
once I've, I've made all the video content that seems sensible to make with it. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Tell a friend, spread the word. And if you're watching this video and I've got less than 20,000 subscribers, that means you need to subscribe now. Yes, you. And please click that notification bell so you know every time I release a new video. Uh, as I said in the previous one, I think, don't worry if this content's not for you. I'm still going to be doing all my normal stuff, okay? This is just an addition, and I need to bring in some new viewers, a new audience. So uh, hopefully these videos on the Audi will do that. Thanks, guys. See you next time.